German-based multinational Henkel has been around a lot longer than we have. Its products in home care, adhesives technology and beauty care are literally everywhere in our lives. But in today's fast-moving world of sustainability challenges and evolving values, staying relevant and flexible is no easy challenge. I'm here to speak to Henkel CEO Carsten Knobel about a huge corporation that still feels like a family firm. So, Carsten, great to sit down with you. Henkel's been around for, what is it, more than 140 years now. I mean, what's the secret to keeping a, a big company like that relevant and competitive right through into the 21st century? So, first of all, Andrew, thanks uh, for having me. And uh, yes, you're right, 145 years uh, of success. And I think it first starts always, I think, with the ability to permanently being able to change. Uh, secondly, I think we always put the company culture as an important uh, factor and we continuously involved that uh, over the last uh, decades. And the third part is, I think for me, people is uh, a very important factor and therefore the engagement of our employees worldwide as a really global company was definitely of utmost importance. And last but not least, we are a family-owned uh, company with a Henkel family as an anchor shareholder. And I think the combination of these uh, factors has made us uh, successful in the past. I think it's also currently the case and it will also be most probably the future that this combination will help us. Well, we can get on to the future in a minute. I mean, in your literature, you talk about your staff as pioneers, 53,000 diverse employees. You say united in a common purpose to enrich and improve life. Well, that's quite a claim. You know, for me it's important, uh, it is not a marketing claim uh, or a tagline. I think it's really uh, what unites us, uh, where we uh, as a company uh, stand for. It's our company purpose, so pioneers at heart, for the good of generations. And you mentioned it, if you have a company, a global company with more than 50,000 people, a very diverse uh, community, you need to unite the people. And especially this uh, purpose is something where we see a lot of enthusiasm in the company when we launched that uh, within this year. And um, I think if you look at that, Pioneers at Heart, I think stands on the one side for what our founder was standing for. Fritz Henkel, when he, 145 years ago, founded the company, I think this entrepreneurship is really the one which has driven over the last uh, 140 years the success on the company. So it's not only about uh, business, but really combining business also with sustainability and the way looking forward, what is important uh, in these days. And this whole purpose is then also the direction of our purposeful growth agenda. You mentioned sustainability. It's something a lot of companies talk about more and more. I suppose if you go back 10 years, sustainability was like a, a box ticking exercise. But now it, we realize it's, it's more of part of the evolution of, of where we're going. I mean, tell, tell me a bit about that part of Henkel's change. Being aware of sustainability, what it means, the changing values that go with it. Since uh, more than 30 years, uh, we're having our sustainability report out, talking about and measuring uh, you know, sustainability. And it also goes back, uh, if you think about Konrad Henkel, who was uh, uh, the last uh, CEO out of the, uh, of, from the Henkel family, already in the 70s, he talked about that companies that only think about profits, yeah, they will soon lose to be relevant. That was a strong statement 50 years ago. And uh, therefore, we already set up a sustainability strategy in 2010. Uh, defining our goals until 2030 and in the middle of that 2020 we have seen improvements uh, in efficiency about uh, 60 percent and uh, we have also made the point that we want to become climate positive until 2040 and I think that's also embedded in our purposeful growth uh, strategy where we want to reach a competitive edge and one of these dimensions is sustainability. Well, that brings us on to the issue of partnerships and uh, the World Eco Economic Forum this year is all about cooperation and working together. I mean, you've been doing that a while. Would you now like to see Henkel adopting something of a sort of leadership role in your sector? An important factor is uh, for me that, uh, you know, the cooperation needs to go along the value chain. I think it's not possible that one alone can make uh, a difference in these days anymore because the things are so complex and what is happening in, in, in the world. So therefore, giving you an example uh, where we want to combine 
circular economy, but also, you know, climate uh, neutral growth is also related in one issue, initiative where we are the co-founder, uh, which is uh, Together for Sustainability. Uh, where more than 30 chemical companies are partnering in terms of defining, uh, be it, you know, environmental, but also social or government's uh, performance roles. I think only by working together, we can reach, you know, the goal and drive really an impact uh, on our planet. I mean, a lot of companies nowadays are looking left and right. And when they used to see competitors, now they see partners almost, you know, working towards the same goals. And it, it, competition is being re addressed and rephrased. I mean, on your industrial side, for example, do you see more problem sharing and problem solving done in partnership with people that once might have been your competitors? In the consumer business, um, you're working with uh, the consumers, with trends, but you don't know really the individual consumer. But on the industrial side, you know, you're closely working with your partners, with your customers. If I take our business, you know, we're not providing any more products. We are providing solutions and these solutions are co-developed because we have a lot of R&D expertise, a lot of technical expertise at our customers to develop and to find the solutions with them uh, together at, at their production facilities. They are around the world and therefore we are there where they have their problems or where they need the solutions. And I think therefore the level of uh, cooperation has significantly increased. How does a company stay flexible with such a speed of development and innovation? You know, for this, it's not a question of size, but really a question of uh, not being inflexible and not being uh, slow as it has been maybe uh, in the past. I think it's more important to talk about leadership and to talk about culture because, you, knew, you know, you need to change the habits in a company. Uh, we need to get less micromanagement. We need to have a faster decision process into the organization because these digital parts are moving with such a tremendous speed and also COVID has shown us or shows us that uh, I think we need to adapt uh, quite fast in order to stay ahead of the curve. I said we'd talk about the future. I mean, you've always got that balance with Henkel, haven't you, of being a, a multinational organization, but at the same time a family firm. And you need to keep that, don't you? For us, it is really important to take best of both, best of both worlds. On the one side, from the capital market, the discipline, also the transparency. But on the other side, uh, based on this family approach, really a long-term strategic perspective. And I think that's uh, definitely something which is also fun and uh, is a, a good thing in terms of further developing the company. So final thought then, Carsten, you're now the CEO. How do you think that job has changed in, say, the last 10 years? I believe the CEO is responsible to drive the culture, the strategy and the team and the people of a company. And I think that's not different from the past. But what has changed, I think, in the last 10 years especially is the speed and the vulnerability of the business and the volatility what is happening. And uh, where you in past, you had some years to develop a new strategy or change. I think today you have a couple of quarters or months, and I think that's uh, the significant difference, uh, which is, uh, you know, bringing quite a big pressure also on uh, to make the right decisions at the right time. And with that then, briefly, are you optimistic about the future? It's been a difficult couple of years. I'm always optimistic. For me, the glass is always uh, half full and not uh, half empty. And yes, we have a lot of challenges uh, ahead of us. But it comes back, you know, to your first point where you ask what, is the, what have been the drivers or the secret of success? And I mentioned the ability to change as the first point. And I think that's exactly what it is about. I think uh, thinking positive, but also taking the challenges uh, and looking positive into the future. Carson Knobel, thanks very much indeed. Andrew, it was a pleasure to have this conversation. Thank you.